Investor Podcast. This is Scott Tuzana along with Brian Cron. And today we are going to talk about the best approach to building muscle over 40, which really stems from uh, my experiences that I'm going through right now with this current building phase. It began uh, right around Labor Day. And so I'm about 10, 11 weeks into it right now. I'm going to be continuing along with this throughout the year until uh, January 2nd when I begin my next cutting phase, which should last about uh, six to eight weeks. So at the end of August, I had written a blog post kind of outlining my whole plan for the year, uh, how I wanted to spend most of this year in a muscle building phase. I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made in the past is spending too much time in a fat loss phase, not enough time building muscle. I learned from that experience and um, so far things have been going to plan with this, but um, still lots of lessons that uh, I've been learning <laughs> along the way. Uh, experience, experience is certainly uh, the best teacher here. And um, so what's sparking this um, podcast today is a video that I posted uh, just a couple of days ago sharing my current physique update here. Um, so in the 11 weeks into this building phase, I'm up eight pounds. The first three pounds happened just about right away and it coming from uh, the food volume going from a cutting phase to a, a muscle building phase, just the extra food volume in my body as well as uh, water weight, glycogen, all that fun stuff. So the initial three pounds, um, just normal getting back up to maintenance level calories type thing. The rest of the five pounds, that's it's basically a rate where I wanted to be half a pound a week, two pounds a month, um, big rate to plan. But what I'm noticing is it really seems like the the greater percentage of weight gained is coming from fat rather than muscle. It just really, it didn't take long for my lower abs to blur out. I just look softer. I kind of look average. It, it's really an uncomfortable feeling for me. And I, I think it really kind of stems from being a smaller guy, five foot, six and a half, weighing 155 pounds. I'm a lightweight, like five pounds on my frame, five pounds of fat makes a, a pretty dramatic visual difference. I do look a lot softer with five pounds of fat on me, but I guess a reverse scenario, five pounds of muscle on my frame looks incredible. Like it's very, it, it's just as um, uh, visually uh, you see the visual impact uh, quite significantly there. So really it's caused me to to, to reflect on mm -hmm. this this process, this journey, and realizing here after all these like, <laughs> decades of training and being 41 years old, gains, I kind of really I've come to terms accepting that gains are coming a lot slower <laughs> for me. You think? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I really got to embrace that and realize yeah. that even gaining two pounds a month is probably too much for me at, uh, at the stage of the game. So I've, yeah. my goal is I want to balance this off you, get a good little discussion going here. Um, first step, so I'm finishing this year off strong, I think kind of taking lessons that I'm learning from here and applying them immediately, uh, but still finishing in a building phase throughout this yeah. year. Uh, but I think after the next cutting phase, my, my approach will be to um, take it much slower. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is just really holding on to that that weight um, for a little longer, even eating at maintenance for a little while, and then taking it really slow and steady, maybe gaining a pound a month or half a pound a month, and really staying in that muscle building phase or maintenance phase a lot longer. I guess even more important than, than staying in the muscle building phase and maintenance phase is spending very little time in a deficit. I, I think I'm trying to spend as little time in a deficit as I possibly have to um, from here on now. So that was a lot of time kind of sharing the backstory <laughs> here. Um, looking looking for, for some insights from you. Should I be, do you, do you recommend kind of holding on to that, that weight for a little while before getting into the muscle building phase? Do you think I'm on the right track in, in approaching this as a, even going even slower and steadier than what I've been at right now. Uh, and the other thing that comes to my mind is I, I think I should be getting just a little bit leaner than where I was right now. Cause five pounds to me at this stage where I was at, at the end of my last cut to where I'm at right now, it, it puts me to a point where I, I get uncomfortable with how I look. Whereas if I dropped two to three pounds more during the cutting phase, which would be 
very easy for me to do, not extending my cutting phase too long. So instead of six weeks, I might be at it for nine to 10 weeks and, um, and then getting back into a, a maintenance level. Um, yeah, I, okay, okay. Well, first of all, I think you look fine. And, I think <laughs> and I, that's, I think that's a big deal. Little, yeah, I think you'd be a little hard on yourself. And, and you know, it's not even that at over, you know, over 40, yeah, things definitely slow down. Your maintenance goes down noticeably. I sure, I sure noticed it. Um, but also look at your training age, man. Like, you've been training yeah. for well over 20 years. Yeah. I mean, if you can add naturally like a pound or two of muscle a year, that would be an enormous win. That'd be yeah. a huge win. So, I mean, if you're adding, you know, a, a pound or two a week to the scale, you have to be, you have to reasonably assume that a great deal of that is fat. I mean, because you're just not going to add, you're just not at that point anymore where you can add that kind of, you can't add lean tissue that fast, you know, naturally. Yeah. Um, we can't force feed it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a slow process. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know. I, I think what you, yeah, I think... I don't think you did anything wrong per se, and I think, and again, I think you look fine. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, when I when I ended my diet this year, I I completely screwed it up because I made the mistake of basically ending and then starting to travel. I went to Texas and stuff. Yeah. After this long diet, and all I did was eat because right away I was out of my structure. I was out of my, and I'm big on structure and consistency. And when I lost that, well, I decided to lose it. Um, you know, everything just kind of fell apart and I just ate whatever I wanted and had all this hunger drive from dieting for so long and just overate. And I mean, the good news is, is I reined it in and things kind of settled back to normal, but it's a, it's hard. It can be hard on the head if you don't have that wherewithal. Um, but getting back to you, man, like I think what you have to do is just what, like when you end your cut, you have to go to maintenance and just diet that much stricter. I always say this is the hardest part of the diet is when it ends because mm-hmm. you have all this drive to eat more and the diet's over and so now you're looking onto new things and stuff you've neglected, be it people or social events or restaurants or whatever. But that's when it's really hard, man. You, you know, you have to like embrace the consistency and the structure that much more, but just eat a bit more, eat closer to maintenance, whatever that is. That's always a freaking moving target. Right. Uh, uh, and you know, just as we brainstorm this, I think a great practice is if you, you know, if you're dieting for a vacation or something to end your diet, say two weeks before and just use that last and use a couple of weeks just to really solidify and get, you know, get over yourself, get over the drive to eat more and just kind of embrace the pattern, the consistency and then go away and eat to your heart's content. So anyway, Right, because think, those yeah. are those are those are really really good points, uh, and especially if you've been cutting for and dieting for an extended period of time, you get to the yeah. end, and all of a sudden all the rules are out the window. It's yeah. like yeah, it's finally done. Yeah, yeah. now I can yeah. live a little, and and it's very easy to kind of fall into the same mindset that everyone else has, and so you're letting loose on the weekends. You're you're drinking alcohol more than normal. You're going out for dinners during the week, and um, you're just there's less restraint. There's less rules. There's there's mm-hmm. yeah, and it there's like you said less structure in place. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the that's the time when you really realize the importance of structure. I think that's oh, one of the beauties of mm-hmm. of dieting down it is the structure in in your lifestyle. I've I've heard some of my coaching clients in the past say. Um, like they get done the dieting phase and like, oh man, here I, when it's over, I thought I could finally, I wouldn't have to be worried about my intake or anything else anymore. And it's, no, it's, it's, it is just as yeah. important. Um, but yeah, the more structure you have mm-hmm. in your life, if you continue eating the same foods that you're eating, basically you should be anyways, whether you're, you're yeah. in fat loss or muscle building or maintaining you should be eating most of the same types of foods and meals throughout the time. You're just eating them in greater portions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, no, oh, totally. I mean, I, I, it's funny. I just had a, a relatively new client. He's on the heavier side, and he was very resistant to like structure and stuff. His lifestyle didn't afford that, it, and he had a, all, all sorts of excuses. I said, okay, cool. We'll try it. Kind of try it your way. And then within a month, he's like, I'm just loving <laughs> being in a structure and consistency because. The discipline and, con- and the consistency makes it so much easier. Yeah. So that's what he said. But I mean, getting 
getting back to you, I mean, um, yeah, I just think you just needed to end your diet on a little bit more of a structured note. Mm -hmm. And that would have maybe, not that you gained so much fat, man. I still maintain you're being a little bit. Yes. Bit of, bit of, no, it, it, it's just how, <laughs> how it looks on me. I mean, really, yeah. most people would be like, well, he gained five pounds. That's, yeah. that's nothing. <laughs> I guess, really. But visually on my physique, how I carry it, I, I yeah. think that's, that's a big difference. And it's myself comparing me comparing myself to others and how they look when they've gained like there's guys out there who gain 20 pounds and look leaner than I do after gaining five just they're more evenly distributed their fat mine all went right to my love handles and lower belly and washed them out uh, mm -hmm. right away so that that does to me it makes me look average uh, I kind of lose mm -hmm. that that little advantage my aesthetic advantage where uh, when I'm lean, I, it's easier for me to create that illusion of looking bigger. Mm -hmm. I look bigger yep. when I'm leaner. So mm -hmm. when I gain a little bit of fat, I'm like not only do I look softer, I don't look as muscular. So um, it's kind of – I've got to really keep that in check. I don't have a lot of wiggle room there, which is kind of mm -hmm. whereas I was thinking um, getting a little bit leaner at the end of the cut because I was lean. I was lean, um, yeah. not as oh, lean yeah. as I not as lean as I have been for photo shoots. Definitely not as lean as I have been for contests. Uh, but I think if I got two to three pounds leaner, I looked like consider right now where I'm at with that extra five pounds. Two pounds ago, three pounds ago, I still look fucking awesome. So I think if I'm if I'm gaining the five pounds and I'm ending two or three pounds ago. That's a that's a good spot where I mean where I, I'll be mentally in a really good place. I'll still look great. I think so. I think my my ceiling has to be a little bit lower for the body fat percentage that I end a cut at. But I also think I need to really take it slower and steady yeah. um, for the long yeah. term. I think those are some of the bigger lessons for me. And certainly um, we were having it was a great discussion going back and forth in the uh, physique mastery movement community. There and a lot of people chimed in. There's a lot of guys within our community that are my size as well, kind of going through um, similar struggles and, and challenges. But it, uh, uh, you kind of picked it right out there where where really it came down to, yeah, I've gained half a pound a week. Um, um, my goal was to be just barely above maintenance level calories, like 200 calories above maintenance. But you, you, you nailed it where I said, all right, so maybe you've been around that for most of the time, but then <laughs> letting loose on the weekends, it's those extra little bits here and there yeah. um, that really kind of packed on that, that extra little bit there. So that's where I think the structure would really come into place. Just keeping the same mindset. It's a mindset that I really love. I have no problem mm -hmm. not drinking very often. It's kind of who I am. I just been... It's just been that that mentality. Yeah. Fuck, diet's done. Yeah. All right, all right, I'm gonna let loose here. And it's just I've had countless opportunities. Every weekend there's been parties and gatherings, and things are finally starting to slow down for me a little bit right now. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a little bit better at, at re reeling that in, keeping the reins um, held and under control. So just just lots of lots of lessons um, along the yeah. way, I think. Yeah, it's well. That's the whole horse in the barn thing, man. I mean, so it's it's once you, you know, once you don't have anything to diet for or to restrict your whatever or to, to focus on physique wise, it's very easy to just kind of lose sight and you know, you know, indulge here, indulge there, and it catches up very very quickly. Especially when you're in a very kind of depleted state, it comes on very quickly. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's not to say that I mean half a pound a week isn't quick. But it's still, it's still. I could, I could have got kept it uh, yeah. much, much slower. And I think, I think the other part, it's tough to know that. I think the more structured I, I am, it would have been easier for me to kind of know where my maintenance was, um, because I'm used to eating the same foods. But I've kind of gotten off path of those, the structured meals. I've been, oh shit, my wife came home with my favorite box cereal. I'm gonna fucking scarf <laughs> yeah. that down. Or, out with the boys and they're yeah. having chili dogs. It's like, All right, I'll put it. So little things I mm -hmm. normally wouldn't do, and it was, it was a little more frequent. So it's it was harder for me to kind of guesstimate where my caloric intake was. Um, so I definitely need to, to get that on track. But it is tough. It's tough to kind of maintenance is it's it's a floating thing, and it, yeah. it's it's really tough to kind of stay around there. So 
knowing that I'm in a bit of a surplus, making sure I'm not in a deficit, but keeping it under control is, is important. And um, I think the other thing is not, not being so obsessed with the, the scale weight as well. I think that's one thing yeah. that I'm probably going to have to ditch in this uh, yeah. upcoming building phase uh, later on in the new year. Um, and, I, and I've seen that cause problems with some of our, our coaching clients, the ones who are taking the smart approach and taking it slower and steady. Um, like I, I went for half a pound of weight gain a week. Others were going for a quarter pound. So you're looking at gaining a, a pound a month. And if they went up to, oh, I gained half a pound this week, oh my God, I screwed up, I gotta pull it in. Like you're, you're trying to measure a quarter pound a weight gain a week is damn near impossible, man. I could piss out a quarter pound. Like it's, <laughs> it, 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 Easy, it's man. really tough to, to, to make sure that to, to really honest, have an honest measurement of gaining a quarter yeah. pound a week. You really have to wait till the month, like measure every four weeks and go, okay, I'm up a pound after a month. That that's good. I'm in the right place. But a quarter pound a week is, and even that, even a pound a month is that. <laughs> My God, you that's why, it's a, yeah, it, it's 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 tough. a fool's game. It's a fool's game, man. It's like that's why I'm oh, I'm just such a big believer in just like just having a way of traveling. Like how you kind of eat all year, you know, and just where you're very stable, and then occasionally, you know, you you know, you might have a phase where you tighten up, and and then you might have a phase where you know you allow yourself to relax, be it like a cheat meal on the weekends or or you know or refeeds, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I just, yeah, like like the scale is such a lousy metric. Yeah, you know, because I mean, like especially once you've been training as long as you have, I mean, like guys are going into shows, they're making improvements in their physique, and they'll be going into shows and they'll actually weigh a little bit less. You right. know, it's just because it's just their you know, muscle comes on so slow, and and I mean, you always have more fat to lose than you really think, and it becomes mm-hmm. such a conditioning battle more than anything. I mean, that's bodybuilding, mind you, but yeah, I mean, like for the everyday person, I just. I'm such a big believer in just getting into like a nice zone, you know what I mean? And then where your body is just so like kind of weight stable, like in a pound here, a pound there, and you just feel consistent. And then you can kind of make gradual tweaks, you know, kind of like landing an airplane, man. You just make little adjustments, and, yep. you know, as opposed to, all right, now we're going to land this fucking thing, <laughs> just barrel it right down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, I just think that's getting back to you. I think that's what, yeah, you, you should, you know, you could do next time. Just hold that maintenance a little bit longer. See what happens. You'll right. invariably gain, you'll invariably gain weight regardless, you know, right. especially if you decide. Uh, and that's why I was, when we were talking on the thread, I was a little skeptical of you saying, oh, I should have gotten leaner. I'm like, eh, you'll just, your body will just adjust that much harder. You know what I mean? Like the further you dig, you know, especially if your, your set point is kind of where you're at right now. Like the further right. you dig away from that, the more it's going to want to come back. I mean, you could try to hold that set point, but you're never going to hold a very lean. You can hold a lean condition, but a very lean, you're good fucking luck. Right, you know? right. Okay, so coming coming around to that, that was one thing I was thinking about after yeah. after our discussion. Because we've, t- we've actually talked yeah. about this beyond the thread. You and I have had a few conversations yeah. about this before the podcast, in between. Um, and it had me thinking the other day that um, maybe I shouldn't get leaner maybe i should get yeah. right where i was at where was that's a pretty it's happy great. that was a pretty happy place for me i was lean i look great not not crazy right. straight or anything but it was it was a maintainable physique so at that point i could maintain that that for a while comfortably um yes yeah, so just getting, remember, getting to that point yeah. and maintaining it rather than pushing a little harder getting yeah. deeper and then trying to give myself more wiggle room yeah i might be better off just getting to that point in six weeks yeah. And just holding it, just holding it. I think that could be. That's that's what I thought because I remember you at that time when the diet you you were pissing and moaning about low energy. Like yeah. you're you're using the usual complaints like oh I, I really want to eat this or eat that, but it wasn't like oh my god I can't sleep. You know oh my god my legs feel like they're a thousand pounds. Oh my you know or oh my god I can't work. You know it's like you weren't there. Like you're in a good place. You know apart from some wanting a, a hot dog on the weekend but it's like <laughs> i mean that's that's like good place to be i yeah. mean that, that's why when you're like oh i should have gotten leaner i was like oh fuck why you know like you would have just you know because you were in great shape and yeah you would have looked that much more awesome but 
you wouldn't have held it. Yeah, and is it yeah. ne- is it necessary? Yeah, if it's not necessary, why push yeah. my body to that point? If I got that yeah. lean and that's a maintainable physique, physique that I could I could hold on to a while and slowly, yeah. if I just took the approach a little bit slower, so maintain a little bit longer, slowly bump things yeah. up. Yeah, I. I, that would be a, a good place for me to be. It's fun. See, that's, this is the beauty of, I mean, it's a conversation, mm-hmm. you and I bouncing ideas back and forth mm-hmm. about my physique, but I hope there's the people listening to this are, are gaining some valuable insights um, from our experience because I'm sure others are have had uh, similar conversations as well. I think the other thing that you pointed out to me about uh, in addition to ditching the scale is just setting different goals, like yeah, different yeah, measurements yeah. Um, for success. And I think this it's a great opportunity to just kind of all right, forget about the scale as a tool to use during muscle building and focus on all right, do, what kind of strength gains do I want to make at certain stages along this journey? Um, mm-hmm. Are there certain lifts I want to improve upon? Um, and just embracing the process even more so than I am now. I mean, I fucking love yeah. this journey and everything, but there's so many different ways I can I can make progress and different goals that I can set that aren't measured by the scale. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm huge into that. Just finding other ways, other carrots to chase it, as I always put it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's great when the lifts go up, but that, you know, that, that gets real, that gets really slow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And you know, and the scale, I mean, you know, I always say people put way too much power in it and, you know, so I have some clients weigh themselves every day, not because I'm encouraging that, but just so they can see that the fricking thing just goes up and down and it just tells you such such limited data, you know? So if anything, you just weigh yourself every day and just get a trend, you know, yeah. over the course of a month. Um, as long as things are trending in the direction you want to be, you know, o- over the course of a month, then you know you're in a, a good place. Exactly. Yeah. I dig that, man. I dig that. All right. Awesome. So I think this is kind of, this probably sparked kind of a series on the best approach to building muscle over 40. It's kind of, Right now we're looking at, all right, how, how much should you be gaining um, kind of targets to have for and goals to shoot for and, and trying to be spend most of your time not in a deficit, really living life to the fullest. Um, we can get into training, a little bit more into nutrition. We can talk about other stuff in, in future podcasts because I think this is it's an important topic for us guys, especially if we're trying to get the most out of life and, and really – allowing this process to enhance our life and add value to our life rather than add extra stressors to it. So absolutely. It's been, it's been fun. I think it's the beauty of sharing our experiences and it was great to hear that I'm not alone (laughs) by (laughs) by sharing that video within the the community there and getting everyone's feedbacks and thoughts there. So hope everyone enjoyed this again, visit (laughs) physiquemasterymovement.com and uh, we'll catch you next time for another episode.